We'd originally planned uh, an Eastern European theme. Um, each year of the festival, uh, we've, we've tended to focus in on a country, a composer, um, something that would inspire the course of the weekend. And yeah, it was going to be around Eastern Euro Europe and everything was just about to go live and, um, and then and, and our launch concert and so on and then we had to change our plans because of the current situation. So it's interesting how each year kind of unfolds and what comes out of um, contact and communication with the artists, with the musicians um, and, and, and how programmes kind of start to evolve through various conversations and this is obviously a very unique situation so we were thinking practically as well as artistically about what would be possible with all the social distancing. Obviously my brother's quartet, he's married to the second violinist Maria um, and, and then Sasha and Brian, uh, they were able to rehearse you know, at a distance um, and, and repertoire that they've played before with Julian Bliss who's local from Hertfordshire and um, I was very keen to have Julian was going to be coming anyway and uh, yeah so it, it, it's really it, I'm, I'm thrilled that now reflecting on what we've just um, had during the course of the last few days has been been wonderful to see it all come to life. We had this idea of doing these um, recordings and in the spaces at Hatford House and then suddenly we were having various conversations and thought wouldn't it be nice if, if the Salisbury's could be present since we were going to be in their home and they've been spending lockdown here and in fact the festival each year um, has been a kind of gathering for the family and it wouldn't be the same without their presence. So. Um, we, we felt it was worth mentioning that it would be lovely if they would like to come and hear some of the performances. It would add uh, a feeling of performance for, for the musicians. And so it's been very nice to share the music with all of them and, and their friends. We wanted to give an impression of the, the festival atmosphere and what we experienced here during the festivals for a wider audience. So this has been a great opportunity to, to share the house um, Lord Salisbury obviously has given a tour um, talking about some of the artefacts um, and the special things that are in each of the rooms where we've been performing um, with Dr Emily Burns and uh, we've had some special pre-concert talks with Stephen Johnson and we've had the musicians performing these great works in the different spaces. We, we did a launch one year where we, we took the audience on a, on a tour around the house with a perform different performance in each room. So we've tried to capture some of that, the spirit of that. What we've discovered is everyone still needs to perform and the most important thing, whilst it's wonderful to support them um, financially, it's also to give them a platform to be able to do what they love doing. Justin and, and Liz performing in the Wigmore Hall in, in that series, later on in that series. And I thought, well, the last time I saw Justin was in Carnegie Hall in uh, New York. We were both going to hear a concert um, and uh, we bumped into each other. And, and, I, and I just thought, well, I don't know Justin that well, but I'm just going to try and see if he might come with Liz, having just heard them perform Dowland and knowing the connection with Hatwood House. I thought it would be a very appropriate um, collaboration and uh, uh, duo to bring uh, to this particular festival and I know that it meant a great deal to the Salisbury's as well. I think I chose to perform the second suite of Bach in D minor purely because of the time that we're currently living through, that somehow there's a darkness to it, there's a, a feeling of 
reflection of loss, of pain, of suffering. And it just felt appropriate to um, include that. Um, and also so that we could um, have an offering in, in the chapel, in, in the private chapel in Hatfield House. Thank you.